jump right into the board meeting since we only have a, an hour before we, go, we break to reception. Um, so we're going to start with the, the first item, that's item 4.1, Appro approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. There's a motion by Jerry Bibles Vogel, seconded by um, Gabriela Arianes. Uh, please place your votes. I'm in, but I don't. She's getting up. Never mind. Motion passes five zero. Uh, moving on, we have um, item uh, B roll call. Um, let's see, Gabriel Arianes. Jerry Bible Swoko? Here. Adrian Gear? Here. Yolanda Rodriguez Pena? Here. And myself were all present. Um, now moving on, we have um, the, oh, we skipped the flag salute. Jeff, just jumping around. So we're gonna go backwards and go back to item um, first and we'll do the flag salute at this point. Thank you. Apologies on that. Um, so we will now move on to item 5.1, and that's recognition of Azusa High School marching band. Good evening, board. It is our pleasure to uh, bring tonight uh, our Azusa High School band. They participated in band championships and earned a bronze medal. And so we have um, Dr. Gomez here. We have our band director, uh, Mr. Douglas McKenna, who has brought students and parents. And so we're very excited. We'd like for them to come forward and tell you about their championships and uh, what they won. Come on up. So, and, and uh, very uh, quickly, uh, good evening. Uh, just uh, giving a big shout out again to uh, uh, Mr. McKenna and uh, the, the band and color guard. Uh, the first time in seven years that uh, they placed uh, uh, in, in an increasingly difficult division. Uh, and I, I honestly thought that they did, uh, they should have been in first or second, but uh, uh, the judges uh, got it wrong, but they'll be there next year. <laughs> Uh, but just just a big shout out to to um, the students, the hours that they put in, uh, also our, our Aztec parents that um, are here sometimes longer than, than the kiddos, doing all the background drops and everything that they do and, and driving. And uh, so just uh, uh, very proud uh, of the work that Mr. McKenna uh, and and all the parents did, especially for Mr. McKenna. This is his first year uh, with our Aztecs, so excited about all that good work. So I'm just uh, pass it off to Mr. McKenna and our and Aztecs. Uh, thank you very much for having us here and recognizing it, um, the band, for their achievement. It was the SCSBOA uh, 2A championships this year at, at Martin Luther King High School. The band had a great season, um, taking several first places, a couple second places, and we were very excited to to achieve this bronze medal. Um, the division was very difficult. Out of 30 bands, we it was whittled down to 12, and then we ended up in third. So I'm super proud of the ensemble, and um, I'm going to introduce a couple students to speak. Oscar, our assistant drum major. I'd just like to say that I'm, I'm thankful for everything that has happened. All these people here, the students, they all put in all this hard work. And it's beautiful to see, like, they're all here, and they just, everything that they did and they accomplished this year, like, it's just, it's great to see. Like, a group of people working together as a team, 
and just trying to accomplish something, you know, getting getting it done. And uh, all these people here, it's just since day one of band camp, if you see their faces with, filled with determination, it's just wonderful to see. So i just like to say thank you to you guys, too, for making this year awesome. We medaled third place, and thank you. I'd like to ask all of you to come, all of you on the band to come up here. Come back here behind, back here on the dice with Jerry, and then we'll, we'll take a group photo with her. Let's move this around so you can hear me. And I'd just like to say that I was at the Milton Family Toy Drive for our students in, um, here in Azusa, and we had Banner, the, the flag girls, there performing, and it was awesome. So I got to play Santa. Come on over, ladies and gentlemen. The Azusa Unified School District Certificate of Recognition is proudly presented to the Azusa High School Marching Band in recognition of winning bronze in the Southern California Band and Orchestra Association 2A Championship signed Superintendent Linda Kaminsky and Board President Shimonin Cruz Gonzalez. You guys get to get a big picture. We're very proud of all the hard work that you guys have um, um, done. I know whenever I go to Azusa High School, I can always hear the band out, out in the parking lot um, working hard. So we're really proud of everything you put into it, and we look forward to seeing what, what happens in the upcoming year. Okay, moving on, we have item 5.2, Recognition of Citizens Oversight Committee members upon completion of term. So we have four people to recognize. I see... Um, two of them, or three, three of them here. So we'll start with um, Dr. Mark Dickerson is not present. I don't see him, right? Huh? Not able to come? Okay, and then we have Charles Ramirez. Able to come up. So um, let me just introduce a little bit about what the Citizens Oversight Committee is. It is a group that meets four times a year to oversee the Measure K implementation, to make sure that the funds we receive from our voters who voted for it are used on the projects that were approved by the voters. That is the modernization of our schools. And it's these, yeah, come on. These, these people who help out on it come from a wide variety of backgrounds and help to meet, they look over the projects that have been done, they look over the budget line by line very carefully, and they also look over the audits that are done every year. And then in August of each year, they visited all the sites to see firsthand what's been accomplished. And I want to thank Mr. Ramirez for your, your contribution, because he, during our meetings, he asked very good questions that make us think and that clarify things. So thank you, I really appreciate that. It's been a delight to have you here. And I also would like to um, congratulate Charles and Maris for all your hard work and your dedication 
and the COC committee. We have this um, beautiful plaque to give to him. It's a Susan Unified School District, January 15, 2019, award of appreciation presented to Charles Ramirez in recognition of your acceptance, leadership, and devoted service as a senior. He's young. Senior <laughs> citizen represented. He was representing the senior citizens um, for the Citizens Oversight Committee. And I know he did a great job because I would go to the meetings. And congratulations. It was quite an experience for me. Would you like yeah. to say anything about him, Charles? Uh, Come on. Don't be shy. I think a lot of people should find out what this group does because it's unbelievable. When I went to their meetings, I couldn't believe that they had made all those decisions <laughs> <laughs> and the money involved and stuff. But of course, we voted for it, so we're getting our money's worth. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Ramirez, if you don't mind just staying up here on the side while we bring up the other two to recognize so we can get a picture with all of you. So if you just, right there is good. No, if you just stay up here so we can recognize all of you together at the end. A, a photo of all of you. Right. So next we have um, Adrian Greer. Oh, did you want, um, we can go, okay, we can go that. Yeah, we'll do Sean Milner next since Adrian's already up here. So we'll do Sean Milner next. So today, we recognize Sean Miller and the exceptional leadership and the devotion she's given at, at, on her term here at the Citizens Oversight Committee with the Azusa Unified School District. So let's give her a round of applause and thank her for her service. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to quickly to say thank you to the school board, to the district as a whole, Dr. Kaminsky. Um, it's been such an honor to be on, the, on this committee and for its purpose um, to oversee the improvements over these past couple of years in the school district has been such, um, it, it's been very touching for me personally. Um, I know I really um, worked hard in, this, in the community worked very hard to see this school bond passed and to give it assurance that our funds are being utilized properly and to see the um, improvements at the schools, all of the schools um, in particular, even as it was a high school <laughs> for the marching band, um, to see the schools really improve and see the smiles on the students' faces um, has been such a joy. And as the community representative, I really appreciate that. And again, thanks to the school board and to Dr. Kaminsky. Thank you. And we have a very familiar face, Adrian Greer. And I also like to congratulate Adrian Greer for his two years of service. We're very sorry to lose him on this committee, but I'm happy to have him as one of our new school board members. Congratulations. All right, if you guys all want to come up by Adrian so we can get a picture of all three of you. I'm say, oh, yeah, okay. I just Go ahead. one thing to say um, that's exciting for me. The, the last time we had a bond, I was in high school. Here. And I remember being in high school, and I remember uh, the, the classrooms being modernized and the new things coming in. It was really exciting. And so it, it's, it, there's some deja vu, and, it, and it's, it's just an honor now to see that happening again with, uh, within the community and seeing the new things, all, all the things that have already come and the things that are planned. So um, I'm excited for, for our schools and our community.
and I just also wanted to express my my um, deep gratitude for for all the three of you serving on this committee. I mean, I think um, um, we, as a board, we appreciate um, the fact that our community has believed in the district, in our schools, and our students, and passed the bond. Um, but we also really believe in the importance of making sure that the money is spent. Accurately, and so all the time and effort that the three of you have put in, as well as the oversight committee, we really appreciate that. Um, so that we can be, we can assure the community that the money is being spent to improve the schools that our students do attend. And so thank you again for that. Um, and so moving on, we'll move on to item six point one, and that is public comment. Um, are there any public comment cards? None. Okay. So nobody wishes. To, uh, if anybody else, anybody wishes to address the board, now would be the time to come to the podium. Okay, seeing none, um, we'll move on to item 7.1, and that is comments and requests by the board. Um, so we'll start with you, Adrian. Yeah, first, um, I do just want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge um, uh, there, there's, there's someone who may be familiar to, to us, uh, Danny Zeladon, um, who lost his life uh, last week. And um, I want to say that um, I, I, I happen to know him personally, um, and so uh, being with the, the the family and whatnot this this past week, it's a uh, it's a difficult time and a difficult time for for the community as well. Um, I want to communicate to everybody that there's there's such great commitment from the from the school board and from the city and from everybody to uh, to and and the, the community at large to to look at some of what's going on and, and address it head on. Um, and, and so there's a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes that uh, we're eager to, to, to share with you um, here in the near future. And so, um, yeah, I, I just want to say that, you know, I want to make sure that we look at, at, at that stuff and, and, um, and especially the young people having the courage to, to speak up um, and uh, uh, talk to your teachers, uh, counselors um, as well. Um, and and I wanted, I'd like to see a, a stop to all of that. Uh, in addition to that, um, it's been great for me uh, so far to, to be able to go and visit some of the different schools. I'm still trying to make my way around to all of the, the different schools. And so I've been able to get to the high schools, uh, middle schools I'm, I'm coming for, for the next, uh, and, and some of the elementary schools. Uh, so, so far, uh, it's an honor to, to be serving. Yolanda? Okay, um, I'd like to just report that I want to congratulate um, the classified employees that are going to be receiving their award today and um, thank them for their hard work and their dedication. I also want to congratulate our new Citizens Oversight Committee and the new ones coming in. And I want to also thank the outgoing committee for their hard work and dedication and their service for the COC um, that really helps identify our school bond and where our funds are going. And, and, and it's good to see um, the members, you know, mention that you know, where the money's being spent in the, in the you, you, it's visual and you could see what's going on, the great things that are going on at Zuz Unified. And uh, I want to thank whoever was involved in this beautiful newsletter. It, I really like that. It's, it's really great and, and um, I hope we have it at least quarterly or, or more periodically because it's a lot of great information, stuff that we didn't even know about um, our own employees. And um, I also uh, went to many festivities, Christmas festivities, and all the kids did a great job singing all their Christmas songs. I um, also want to thank um, people that came and helped out at the, my, the Pena family, the 16th annual uh, Posada por los Niños. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. And all the students, uh, the children in the community had a great time. Um, I went to Glaston High School excuse me, uh, yeah, Gaston High School in Slauson, they had a, uh, at the middle school, had Let It Snow. They had a concert, um, a Christmas concert, and um, the teacher, Jade Calabasio, did a great job with the students in the middle school, and they combined the high schools, and they had a very beautiful um, concert. Uh, I, I went to the Zusa High School for their um, 2018 Ivy Diploma Award celebration. I want to congratulate the nine students that received their diploma, and I want to thank Dr. Uh, Martin Gomez, uh, the principal, and also the teacher, Bob Colliard, and all the IB teachers for what a fantastic job. These students came back, and they, they're all going to different colleges, and I think it's really good that they're succeeding, and that's what our job is. Um, I went to Azusa High School for Echoes from the Canyon, uh, the anniversary of the 1968 walkouts. And the students, the students from Latino Studies class 
Azusa, Gladstone, and Sierra High School. They shared their poetry, and the theme was like, um, tell them who they are. It was very beautiful and powerful, and I think it's great that we allow students to tell their stories. And I want to thank Victor Gonzalez for telling his story, because he was at Azusa High School um, when they had the walkout, so he's you know, educating the students what went on there. I also told my story. I was also, well, in school in 1968, and um, I told the students my story, and I want to thank the teacher, Dr. Irene Sanchez. And I think it's good that we allow the students to identify and, and, and from the heart, you know, where they come from, because we, we, need, we, need, to, we need to hear them out. I think it, it really helps them um, be more comfortable with themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. Jay? Welcome, everybody, and um, thank you, Ben. Congratulations on all of that. Um, and to our classified employees who are being um, honored today, that is such a great event. And to our uh, former uh, board members for the uh, our former committee members, congratulations. Thank you for everything you guys do because that is definitely something we need people out in the community who can actually step up and say, I've seen it. Things are working out fine. We're getting all of these wonderful things going on with our schools, new fields, so on and so forth. So that's much appreciated. And I know it takes a lot of time out of your time. So and there you go. Um, <clears throat> over the holidays, I got to be Mrs. Claus with Shop with a Cop with our students. And it was awesome <laughs> to have all these kids. It, it, Target gave $100 to each of the students, and a police officer from the Azusa Police Department escorted them around Target and helped them shop, and then they brought it back and had them wrap it, and it was really, really cool. And also, I'd like to thank the Milton family for their annual toy collection that they do for us, and some of our Azusa flag girls that came and uh, actually sit did a routine for us throughout the whole thing. It's always really neat because the community comes up, they get a freeze picture with Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus, and they give a toy, and then the very next day, that toy gets taken, it got taken down to Azusa High this year. And those toys are given to our students who are in need. And we had so many toys and so many people there. It's just grown. I've been doing it for 10 years, and it's just grown and grown and grown. So if you ever have a chance to participate in it, please do, because you will not leave without tears. It's awesome. And I got to run away to my family in Iowa and saw a bunch of snow and grab your kids and love them. Because <laughs> when you get back and you see what we've been going through this last week, it just adds to that. So thank you, and my condolences to the families. Um, yes, and next we have um, Gabriela Arianes. I would like to say Happy New Year to everyone. 2019, can't believe it's, it's, this is the last year of the teens, right? I want to congratulate the Azusa, Unif uh, the Azusa High School Band. I, I was in band, and I know the hard work, getting up in the morning and putting those extra hours. It all is worth it, and it paid off. So congratulations. I, I wanted to go ahead and give thanks to the committee um, that puts on the toy drive, um, the mayor, uh, Azusa High School, the vice principal uh, Rob Velasco for being able to open up that uh, the gym for all of us to be there to serve our community. Thank you. Um, it was a great pleasure to see a lot of the uh, a lot of the families be able to come and um, partake in um, in receiving. And we also saw a lot of um, employees and volunteers. Thank you to all the volunteers that came and helped wrap and help um, help us with that. I, I did go to Mountain View, actually think together, had a Christmas, um, a little Christmas um, uh, program. It was really, really cute um, to see the little kiddos. One thing that I wanted to bring up, um, which will be posted soon, there's a community meeting this next 
not this Saturday, but Saturday, January 26th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Azusa Senior Center. And this is in regards to dialogue, a discussion for the recent gang activity and gun violence that has happened here in our community. It's, um, we're going to come together as um, Azusa City Council and Azusa Unified School District, uh, School Board, I'm sorry. And um, I would just like to go ahead and um, just put that out there for you guys to go ahead and come. Um, and by all of you guys because this is our family our community and it affects all of us so and I would also like to give my condolences to to the families affected thank you thank you um so and that's a somber way to transition so I I, I, I too also want to um, express my condolences and I think um, I, I think for many of you that may be in school sites and community um, um, I, I think I'm kind of at loss at words because I know for me, as this has always been a very safe place. Um, and so I think it's very important for all of us to come together um, t for, as a community to figure out what's happening and, and figure out um, um, how we as a community can address a lot of the violence that's been happening. Um, and I'm really appreciated, appreciative of our new board members, especially Adrian, because I know this is very much the work that you do. So I'm, uh, uh, I'm very grateful that we have somebody on our board that, that, under, that has a direct connection to our students um, and can, can bring that perspective to us as we make decisions in the district about how we're going to, to address um, what's happening in our community from the district side. Um, saying that, um, I do want to transition. I know tonight is a night of celebration. Um, it's really great to see our band here and recognize you and the, the commitment that the Oversight Committee has, has given, um, especially our classified employees who are, who are the bedrock of our schools. Um, and so I hope tonight, um, as we move forward, we're going to break, we're going to um, go through this agenda hopefully very quickly. And at 6.30, we're going to break for a reception to celebrate our wonderful classified employees who have um, dedicated to our community. Um, and so before we move on to agenda, I just wanted to give one quick anecdote. anecdote um, that um, just aligns to, Yolanda, what you said about the, the International Baccalaureate Program. Um, I had the opportunity uh, last week um, to attend the swearing-in of, swearing of our state superintendent of public instruction, who is half, half African-American, half Panamanian Latino. Um, and so it was, it was a, great, it's a great moment to see somebody um, now running our State Department of Education who reflects our communities. Right, um, and then on Wednesday, I had the, the opportunity to go in and see um, her, his chief deputy get sworn in, and she's a Latina who actually had worked in the department for many, many years, um, and had been looked over um, to be become the the number one person, number one staff person in the in the department. To see him make her a priority um, and put her in place was really, uh, really an important thing, I think, for our state. Uh, but the reason I bring it up is because on the way home that night, um, I was going to catch a taxi, but a woman offered me a ride, um, and it turns out that she said. She she was a lobbyist for an organization, and she lobbies for a gate and IB. And I was like, IB, we have an IB program. And, and so I told her I was from Azusa, and she's like, Azusa, we brag about the Azusa program. That program is so great. Um, and so I heard, I was like, and that just warmed my heart, right? Because I know, I know the hard work that's gone into our programs and our schools. And, it, um, and so to see somebody else not even connected to us sort of respond like that when she hears I'm from Azusa and, and she knows about IB programs makes you really proud about all the work that's, that's going in into our schools. Um, so saying that, we're, we're going to transition now into the rest of our agenda. Um, and so we'll move on to item 9.1, which is student matter number two, uh, uh, settlement um, for the Office of Administrative Hearing. What? What? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so I skipped because I don't have the agenda in front of me. Um, comments and reports from our student board member and our cabinet. At Sierra High School on January 16th, the ELAC parent meeting will be held in the parent room at 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. On January 16th, the parent and health forum will be held in the parent room from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. On January 16th, the Spirit Night at Chick-fil-A will be from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. On January 17th, there will be a minimum day at 12.15 p.m. On January 17th, there will be a report card night in various classrooms from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. At Gladstone High School on January 15th, the HIP field trip program will be at Northrop Grumman from 7.45 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. On January 15th, the band performance at Disneyland will be from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. On January 16th, there will be an early release day from 7 a.m. to 1.45 p.m. 
on January 18th, the Slauson 8th grade orientation will be in the JHS campus. On January 19th, the dance team will have their competition at Mater Day High School from 6.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. On January 21st, there will be no school. On January 22nd, Center and Ellington will have their 8th grade orientation at the JHS campus. At Aziza High School on January 16th, there will be an oratory contest from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. On January 17th, the Cafe Azteca will be held from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. On January 18th, the Foothill Middle School 8th grade visit will be from 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. On January 19th, the boys' tennis car wash will be held in the parking lot from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. On January 19th to January 20th, the ASB leadership will have their e-waste in the parking lot from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And on January 22nd, Slauson Middle School will go visit the campus on from 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to uh, take a moment to recognize and celebrate the critical and crucial work that our classified employees do. And it's very appropriate that we take this time to recognize the individual work and, this, and celebrate the individual members that, uh, from each individual site and the district office. Uh, just to highlight, the, our classified employees serve in many different roles throughout the district, from meeting and greeting our students in offices to working with students um, in classrooms, serving food, driving buses, um, maintaining and beautifying our campuses and um, school sites, um, and really just being the backbone to a lot of our work um, as, a, as a district. So I want to uh, congratulate those who will be recognized today and again celebrate all the work of all our classified employees. Thank you. Mark Bomarito? Echo what Mr. Ronquillo said, um, our classified staff is so vital and it's an honor to be here tonight to be a part of this celebration. And I just wanted to thank our students who are here as well, especially our Azusa High kids um, for starting our Saturday school program off. And we had 750 absences that we, rec that we recovered district-wide from our first session. And a large part of that was, a du was due to Azusa High. So thank you, uh, Dr. Gomez, wherever he went, and students. How many of you went to Saturday school? Any of you? All right. Wow. <laughs> how many of you did it because you needed to make up or just because, you, how many of you went because you just wanted to go because you thought it was going to be fun? All right. I like that even more. Oh, good. All right. All right. Um, um, Arturo Ortega? So ditto and uh, congratulations to our classified employees. Um, Well-deserved uh, night in, uh, to uh, praise their accomplishments. Uh, congratulations again to the Azusa High School um, band. Uh, good job on that. Um, I did want to briefly just talk about uh, something. Uh, a while back, uh, Board President Shimonin Cruz Gonzalez uh, sent an email to us saying, hey, uh, let's look into this. Um, and it was something called a one million project uh, that is run by Sprint. And basically it's a project that awards students um, with tablets that come with internet connection. And that's important because having a tablet by in and of itself um, is one thing, but having it with internet connection is, is, a, is something completely different. Uh, so we are happy to announce that uh, since that email, uh, we did apply for the grant and we were awarded this year uh, a total of 258 uh, devices uh, that, are, that, are, that are complete with the internet access. Uh, that, is, that does go to high school students. Uh, our tech department, MIS, uh, worked with schools, uh, giving them uh, some criteria. Uh, sites then worked on identifying students uh, at their sites. And today was our official kickoff. Uh, we went to Glassstone High School, and students and family members were invited to the Little Theater, where staff helped distribute their tablets to them there. Uh, tomorrow, we move on to Azusa High School at 12.30 p.m. And Telemundo, 
uh, will be there to cover the story. Uh, so that's exciting for Azusa. Uh, Sierra High School will be will will distribute their devices uh, soon after that, and we'll let you know once we have a concrete date on that. Uh, we're just very excited uh, about the access our students will now have at home uh, to be able to connect. Um, to different sites uh, for homework, for projects, for resources, uh, just to help them be more successful in high school. So, thank you. That's exciting. Yeah, nice. Um, so, um, yes, I'm, I'm really excited to hear about that happening. Anything else, Arturo? No? Okay. Um, yes, and uh, sadly, it's only, you said how many devices? So, between three schools, that doesn't mean every student gets one, but I think it um, puts us on a, on a pathway to, to thinking about how we can make sure that there's a device in every single student's mm -hmm. hands in our, in our schools. So very exciting news. Um, moving on, we have um, Linda, your, 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 your comments. Thank you. Um, I'd like to um, express a couple of things. First, condolences to our family who lost their, their student. Um, that's a heartfelt and difficult thing for all of us. Our students are actually part of our, all, all of our family. We all feel very connected to them. Um, and then I'd also like to add my congratulations to the Azusa High School band. And um, I wish I could play an instrument as well as you guys do. I love hearing you, whether it's at a football game or it's at some other event. Your music is beautiful. You certainly deserve the award. Thank you so much for the time you put into it and just for bringing such joy to our lives. And also, for the classified staff, I started in education as an instructional aide. And so the classified staff uh, is incredibly important to me. And it's what kept me and actually interested me in going into education and staying in education. I still remember the first student that I ever worked with. Um, and it really changed my life. So the instructional support and all the other support, MOT and grounds and the cafeteria, nutrition services, all the work that happens behind the scenes among people who are dedicated and who spend hours and hours and have given their life to make this a wonderful district deserve our support. And I certainly want to agree with that and concur that we are a good district because of the people that we have working here and what they're giving us all. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, so moving on, we'll move on to item 9.1, Student Matters, Final Settlement for Office of Administra Administrative Hearing Case, number 2018110319, student 1819-0126. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve 9.1. Second. Motion by Yolanda Rodriguez-Pena, second by Adrian Greer. All in favor, please place your, or, please place your votes. I'm sorry. with us while we have technical difficulties yet again. We'll just, um, um, we're just going to take a, a roll call vote. Um, so we'll start. Adrian Greer? Yes. Yolanda? Yes. Gabriella? Yes. Oh, it went 5 0. Okay, it went through finally. All right, uh, motion passes 5 0. Moving on, we have um, item 9.2 approved settlement of eight cases. Um, cases number 016399, 6 Five seven zero one seven six three eight zero one eight seven eight one one seven five five eight two zero one zero one eight seven eight one zero one nine eight three zero and zero two zero four nine. What are the wishes of the board? A second. Motion by Gabriel Arellana, second by Jerry Bibles Vogel. Um, any discussion? Please place your votes.
motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have um, section 10, general functions, item 10.1, capital facilities program update. Dr. Kaminsky. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Bonarito to uh, go through this for us. Good evening, everyone. Um, this update is on our Measure K uh, expenditures and showing what we've completed so far, what is in progress, and what is still on the docket to complete, and then some additional projects that um, the district is looking into if, di if additional dollars are available. So we can go to the next slide. So Measure K was passed, um, and, and it was broken into different issuances, um, which are listed here. So there was a total of $92 million, and it was to be spent over 10 years. Um, if you look at the dates there, and those are the estimates of when we would go out for each issuance, which means uh, re-upping, going out and selling the bonds, and then the district receives those proceeds to use for construction. Um, we've, obviously we've done the first two of those, and the third one is where we're at now. So we're running a little bit low on, on dollars for construction, and so um, we'll be looking at what we need to do to go out again for additional dollars. <clears throat> So this list here is all the items that have already been completed and the total dollars um, spent. So we have spent almost $35 million so far um, with the completed projects. And um, it's mostly modernization, um, HVAC roofing for our sites, and um, some upgrades to um, the outsides of our schools with fencing projects. And we've been able to get a lot of work done very quickly, and quicker than we were actually anticipating to begin with. And one of the benefits of that is construction costs are escalating very rapidly. So the sooner that we get projects done, the, the more money we save. Next. <clears throat> These are the projects that are currently being worked on either in the design phase or actually there's construction happening. Um, some of these projects, like, like the Lee project, is actually physically done. But we're doing the closeout process, making sure that everything's being wrapped up. So most of those dollars have actually been spent and the project is um, near completion. And other ones um, have not been touched yet, like centers modernization. So that project is in the design phase. And these projects um, total $37 million. And so we have a lot of upcoming projects that are going to be happening over the next couple of summers, for the most part. And they're, they're going to be touching many campuses uh, over, the next couple of, uh, over the next couple of years. Um, last, these are the projects that are conceptual that we um, have left to design um, or we've only done pre preliminary designs for. Um, and, and so we haven't fully looked at what it's going to look, uh, what the scope of the work is. So these numbers are uh, estimates. And of course, being that it's in the future, it's hard to know exactly where the dollars fall, but these are estimates right now. And there's, you know, we're getting towards the end of the dollars, which is why there's only four projects that have been left to, to be designed. And those are just over $17 million. 
Next. So when you add those up together, we're just under our $92 million. Um, and of course, things change. Some projects, they come under uh, what we are estimating they will cost, and some go over. Um, but we should be pretty close to spending the entire allotment of our bond um, with those projects that are listed, which means that there's a lot of need left. Um, and so we need to look at some additional funding to get all of the projects that Azusa needs to provide the educational facilities for our kids that they deserve. Thank you, Mark. Um, one of the things that I'm very proud of is that at the start of the construction program, the board, as a group, decided, and actually at the start of the Measure K campaign, they, they committed to finishing the five schools that had not received any modernization under the old uh, 2002 bond, and the two schools that had only received um, a slight touch and needed more additional work done. And it, as you can see, we are on track to, to fulfill that promise in terms of the funding and the pace of what needs to be done, we will be able to say by the time we've spent that the $92 million bond that we, that you as a board, that this district did do what it said it was going to do. So, as, go back one second. So as I said earlier, um, we, are, we are running out of our second issuance, um, which means that we need to go out for a third issuance. Um, to receive an additional $25 million so that we can continue construction at our current pace. Um, and that, that has to be well-timed so that way we can get the best rates. Um, and it's hard to know exactly what those rates will be. And if you could go to the, the next slide, we have some estimates. Next slide. Oh, sorry, go, go one more and I'll skip back. Um, we have some estimates as to what those rates would be, um, which would be somewhere around 4 to 4.4%, 4 hopefully, of course, next uh, closer to the 4% range. Our first issuance, just for historical, um, it was 3.94%. Uh, our second was at 3.98%, which were really good rates. Um, and obviously, the the um, market has not gone in a positive direction since then. I know it's really hard to see those dates on the bottom of this if you're in the audience, um, but this is over the last year. And so we, we kind of hit gold with our second issuance. We hit um, right in that very, very low dip that you see, um, which was over your guys' uh, uh, Christmas break or, or winter holiday. Um, and so we had really maximized our savings there, and things have increased um, since then. And the outlook, which you know, of course nobody knows, um, is that it's going to continue to rise. Um, and so right now is a good time to to get into the market. If you could go back but backwards, um, in looking at what that looks like as far as uh, timelines. Uh, at our next board meeting, we will need to adopt a resolution if we want to go out for a third issuance um, that's supporting um, the, the district moving forward with going out for a uh, third issuance. On February 12th, the County Board of Education, or, I'm sorry, County Board of Super Supervisors will do the same thing and they will approve the sale and then sometime in March would be when we would go out for our final sale. And um, right after that, we would get the proceeds and then go two forward. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, there is still need. And, and so we need to look at additional funding for the district so that way we can um, complete all the projects that our kids need. And these are some of the items that have been discussed at the board. And then the ones below the line are ones that um, we've discussed internally that, that are needed. Um, you know, we, we definitely know that the pools are needed at both sites, um, that um, the gyms need modernization to be completed. They have air conditioning, but they need a full remodernization, including the, the locker rooms. Um, 
<coughs> the old school house, which is at Slauson, um, needs a resolution. Uh, and then looking at some of the safety um, things, adding fencing to, to keep our kids safe, and um, some additional fencing at, our, at the school's listed center, uh, Gladstone High and Foothill. So where will those additional dollars come from? Um, the district is in line for state construction bond dollars. Uh, we got in line very early, um, but the state has been slow to release those funds. So um, with our new governor who just got into office, he has promised to um, it, release those funds much quicker than the past governor. So he's going to be releasing six times more bond dollars, which still isn't enough. There's, there's um, much more need than that across the state, but it's much quicker than it would have happened under Jerry Brown. Um, next would be considering new bonds, working with our county um, so that we could do some joint use agreements for some new facilities. So um, there, there are dollars out there that we're working on getting. Thank you, Mark. Um, and um, we're short on time, so we're going to definitely bring this, this, um, the facilities back to the board um, um, so we can have a greater discussion and bring especially both of you up to date on all the work that's happened. Um, so but this was the initial discussion, and at the next board meeting, we'll have the agenda item on the, on the bond sale. So moving on, we have item 10.2, Measure K Bond Citizens Oversight Committee appointment of new members. Well, it is my pleasure to welcome the new members to the Citizens Oversight Committee. Well, let's take action first. <coughs> um, so, so is there a motion to approve um, the, the recommended appointees? I uh, make a motion to approve 10.2. Second. A motion by Yolanda rodriguez Peña, seconded by Adrian Greer. Any discussion? Please, please place your votes. Congratulations. Motion passes 5-0. Linda, the floor is yours. All right. I would like to invite to come up all together now Diane Pennington, Rosemary Garcia, Myra Rico, and Veronica Vedusco. These, these people have um, agreed to join us and be part of this committee that really is instrumental in overseeing the expenditure of funds and the progress that we're making on our Measure K construction. I want to thank, you have no idea how much fun you're going to have. <laughs> thank each of you, um, because we really can't do it without you. We need your insights, your, your questions, your perspective to make sure that um, we're doing the best that we really can. So I'm going to let each of you say just a word, introduce yourself, and you, the group that you're representing, because this is this committee is designed to represent a variety of people throughout the committee. Rosemary, would you mind starting? I really don't have anything to say. Um, I'm going to be, my name is Rosemary Garcia, and I'm going to be representing senior citizens because I'm old, and uh, <laughs> mainly because I was involved for so many years, and I'm glad to see this come to fruition. And there are some things that the community still asks, so I'd like to be able to give them the correct answers. Thank you. And Rosemary thought she was retiring, but we're not letting her do that. <laughs> Diane. Hi, um, I'm Diane Pennington. I'm with um, the Northrop Grumman Corporation here in Azusa, which used to be Aerojet. Um, I've also grew up in Azusa, so I'm very happy to be part of this committee, and I look forward to it. And you're representing the business, North, the business community. Uh, my name is Veronica Verdusco. I'm rep representing the member at large um, section, and I'm also a parent of an Allenton student in one year, first grade. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Maya Rico. I have three students in Azusa, so I will be representing parents. Um, I'm very excited uh, to see what uh, we can do working together. Thank you. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. And thank you again for uh, volunteers willing be willing to volunteer your time um, to the district. We really appreciate. It. I know a lot of you spend a lot of time in our schools, and as, as it is anyway. But to, to give this extra step, we really appreciate it. 
Um, so moving on, we have um, item 10.3, consider acceptance of the 2017-2018 district audit. And each of the board members, you, you should have gotten the audit in your in your package. Yes. Is the is auditor here in the audience? If you come up, please. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Bobby Patel. I'm one of the audit managers with the firm. Um, I'll go through it quickly. I know you guys are on a time frame here. <laughs> A um, few things I'll be going over, it's the opinions on the financial statements of the district audit report, the bond audit report, and the communications letter that was provided to all the board members with their audit copies. So the process of the audit report, what is an audit? Um, basically, it's a process of providing a reasonable assurance on whether the financial statements were free of material misstatements. The highest level of assurance that we provide, it's an unmodified opinion, meaning everything was clean. And um, how do we get there? It's basically a risk assessment approach, which is pretty much derived from understanding the internal controls and reviewing them and performing testing on sample basis. Um, one of the pages I'd like to draw your attention to, it's the summary of auditor's results. It's on page 100 of your audit report booklet. Basically, this summarizes the opinion for the financial statement audit, the federal awards, and the state compliance awards. Um, as far as the financial statement opinion, it was unmodified, which is, like, like I said, the highest the district could earn. Um, there were no material weaknesses in internal controls. Um, several significant deficiencies were noted, which are commented upon on page 109 of the audit book. Um, as far as the federal opinion goes, again, the district earned an unmodified opinion. And a couple of the programs we tested were child nutrition cluster and special education clusters and noted no issues with either of those two programs. And the last opinion on that page is the state awards opinion. Again, the district earned an unmodified opinion there as well, with the exception of a couple of programs which are mentioned on page 106 of the book. Um, in addition to those findings, um, there were several management letter comments which began on page 113. Usually these are related to ASBs and such. Um, the next page I'd like to draw your attention to, and personally I believe this is one of the most important pages in the audit report, it's um, Schedule of Financial Trends on page 86. The reason I say this is one of the most important pages is this is where pretty much the three year, um, prior three year of the general fund is reported and also the subsequent year's budget numbers. Um, so based on that, uh, general fund balance has remained fairly consistent compared to the prior fiscal year. Um, it's projected to decrease slightly in 1819. Um, available reserves that are reflected in the general fund over the past couple years have increased. Long-term debt has increased over the past couple of years. That's mainly related to the bond issuance that Mark talked about. And in addition to that, um, implementation of GASB 75, which is related to OPEB, which changed the way the OPEB liability is measured. Instead of having it amortized over 30 years, now the districts are required to recognize it all in the same fiscal year, which caused a lot of districts to artificially pretty much inflate that number. And lastly, on that page, um, your average daily attendance it's declining slightly and it's forecasted to decline in the 18-19 fiscal year as well. And the next thing that I wanted to go over, it's the communication with the governance letter that you guys all received with your audit booklets. Basically, the intent of this is to communicate directly with you guys of any um, accounting policy changes like the GASB 75 that I just discussed, um, significant estimates, corrected or uncorrected misstatements we've noted during the audit process. Um, if any audit findings were noted. A couple of things that are also on that letter that are not part of the audit book, it's um, that if we encountered any difficulties with the, with the management or over the course of the audit, um, and I'm happy to say the team that was out here during the audit did not notice anything and said everyone was pleasant to work with. <laughs> um, and then the last thing that I'm presenting is the Measure K bond audit report. Um, this represents both the financial statement of activity within the fund level and also the performance aspect of the audit that's uh, specified by Constitution, State Constitution um, Article 13A. Um, for the financial statement, again, the district earned an unmodified opinion. There were no material weakness or significant deficiencies we noted in the internal controls. And as far as the performance side, expenditures that we tested on a sample basis aligned with what your voters approved. And we tested roughly 79% of total expenditures. Did you guys have any questions? Did anybody have questions? No. No? OK, seeing none, is there a motion? Motion. 
motion by Adrian Greer, second by Gabriela Arianes. Um, any discussion? Saying none, please place your votes. <coughs> motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have the consent calendar. All items in the consent calendar are considered um, by, the mo by the board to be routine and will be enacted by the board in one motion in the format following the last consent calendar agenda item. There will be no discussion of these items prior to the time the board, staff, or public request specific items to be discussed. Um, does anybody wish to pull an item? 11.2. 11.2. Right. Any others? Okay. Um, then um, is there a motion to accept the consent calendar polling item 11.2? A motion by Jerry Barbas Wogel, seconded by Gabriela Arianes, um, to, con um, to accept the consent calendar, um, accept item 11.2, and 11.2 will now become 12.1. So as soon as that comes up, we'll take a vote. Oh, um, so we'll take a, um, a hand vote. Uh, Adrian Greer, a voice vote? Yes. Yolanda? Yes. Gabby? Yes. And I vote yes, 5-0. Moving on, we have item 12.1, which used to be 11.2. Um, is there a motion to approve this item? I make a motion to approve. I'll second. <coughs> Before discussion. All right, so there's a motion by Yolanda at Rodriguez Pena, seconded by Jerry Bibles Vogel. Any discussion? Yes, yeah, so this is the last set of uh, meetings that I personally was not a part of, um, so I prefer to abstain. Okay, that was easy. All right, um, so any other questions or comments? No? Okay, so let's take a vote. Motion passes um, four yes, one abstention. Um, moving on, we have item 13.1, approved resolution 1819-105 to determine seniority among TK through 12 and management certificated employees with the same seniority date. In other words, the tiebreaker resolution. Um, Jorge, do you want to explain this, please? Yes, of course. This is a resolution that is uh, passed on a yearly basis. In the event of a um, tie for seniority purposes, um, the list presented before you for you to vote is used uh, for tie-breaking uh, situations. Thank you. Is there a motion? Motion by Jerry Bibles Vogel, seconded by Gabriela Arianes. Any discussion? Seeing none, please place your vote. Okay, we'll take a, while you're doing that, we'll just take a, a hand vote again. Adrian Greer? Yes. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, item 13.2, approve resolution 1819-106 to, to determine seniority among adult education, non-management certificated employees with the same seniority date. This is the same tiebreaker resolution for adult education. Is there a motion? I make a motion on 13.2. Motion by Yolanda Peña, seconded by Gabriela Arellanes. Any discussion? Please place your vote. Motion passes 5-0. Um, moving on, we have item 13.3. Ap consider approval of consultant Dr. Gloria Ramos Gonzalez, resolution 1819-107. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Adrian Greer, seconded by Yolanda Peña. Any discussion? Dr. Dr. Kuminski, can you please tell us a little bit about this consultant, please? <laughs> um, actually, I'd like to invite Norma Camacho. Thank you. This is to support our dual immersion program. Good evening. Um, Dr. Gloria Ramos Gonzalez is going to be working with our dual immersion teachers and supporting the development of Spanish literacy and instructional practices. We're very fortunate to be working with her. She has worked 
in a variety of capacities, um, supporting dual immersion programs, growing dual immersion programs across the country. Um, she has a doctorate from USC um, specific to language development, and she's also worked with CABE, the uh, California Association for Bilingual Education. So she will be working to support um, our dual immersion teachers. Perfect. Thank you. All right, saying so no, the discussion is please place your votes. We'll just take a hand vote. Adrian? Yes. Yolanda? Yes. Gabby? Yes. Jerry? Yes. I say yes. Motion passes 5 0. Moving on, we have item 14.1 approval of adult education 2019 training site alignment contract with Craig CPR and first aid training. Is there a motion? Second. Motion by Jerry Bibles Vogel, seconded by Yolanda Pena. Any discussion? Seeing none, please place your votes. Motion passes 5 0. Moving on, we have item 14.2 approve agreement with Terry Tao, attorney at law. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Motion by Jerry Bibles Vogel, seconded by Gabriela Arellanes. Any discussion? I want to know um, so, um, how long is this contract for? The contract is. Uh, for a year and a half to put us on the same cycle as our other legal um, contracts. So would he be doing the same thing as AALRR? Uh, uh, he would be doing, already have? He would be doing the same work that he did for us under AAL, AALRR. Yeah. Um, yes. All right. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Please place your votes. Motion passes 5-0. Moving on, we have um, information items. Um, out of recognition of time, we're going to take, um, I'm not going to read the, these are um, first readings of board policies, so I'm not going to read out the board policies. I'll just ask, does anybody have any questions on item 15.1, which is the first reading of um, board policies related to community relations and Williams complaint? Anything? Any questions? No? Okay. Moving on to item 15.2. .2. First reading for board policies connected to absences, excuses, um, seclusion and restraint, weapons and dangerous objects, mental health conditions, tuberculosis, health screening, suicide prevention, and married, pregnant, parenting students. Any questions on any of these? No, moving on. Um, item 15.3, um, first reading of board policies um, related to trips, homework, Makeup work, independent study, education of children of military families, um, home and hospital instruction, and evaluation of instructional program. Any questions? Okay. Um, all right, that's great. Moving on, that gives us now to item 16.0, which is the special reception for classified employees of the year. Um, and we want to make sure that we have a whole half an hour for this because we're going to ask everyone to to leave this dash through the rain to the back by the. Um, um, in the back, we have a tent set up um, where we have some refreshments for everyone to enjoy. So we're going to come back and convene at 7.10. So we're going to take a break now. Everyone is welcome to join us. Students, I know you may have homework, but you're welcome to join us back there. We have food and drinks. <coughs> Oh, they're on that side. Okay, sorry, got it. You're next. I know, I'm next. I've got to get my lips ready. <laughs> my, my shaky hand. That's so Meeting 
um, this is going to be the highlight of the night. Can you hear me? Am I on? I'm talking. Good evening. I'm on. Can can people hear me in the back? In the back of the room, can you raise your hand? Can you hear me? No, I'm speaking loud. It's not me. It's not me then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. All right. I learned that from teachers. It works really well. All right. We're going to get started. Um, and it's my great privilege to open this part of the meeting um, as we recognize our classified employees of the of the year for each school site, um, as well as the district office, and then and, and, our, and our classified employee for the entire district. Um, so it gives me great honor to turn this over to and who am I turning this over to, Linda? To Steve Falkenberg. So if I, you come up, Steve. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is a great night, and you are in for a treat. Uh, trust me, okay, if you don't feel like you've experienced a treat afterwards, come and see me, and, and we'll talk. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a change procedurally. Normally, we do our, you know, on-deck circle, but what I would like everybody to do is line up, just line up down that row. Okay, one right after another so that we can kind of move through uh, as quickly as we can. So, Madam President, um, members of the board, Superintendent Kaminsky, members of the Superintendent's Cabinet, student board representatives, students, fellow employees, and guests. Each year, it's my distinct privilege to oversee the selection process for the Classified Employee of the Year from each of the school sites and from the various departments as well as the Classified Employee of the Year for the entire district. It is a process that includes the nomination and selection of classified employees at each of the school sites, as well as other various locations and departments, such as our maintenance department, the district office, the adult transition program, and nutrition services. Once the selections are made at each of the schools and locations, then each of the nominees is interviewed by the Classified Employee of the Year Selection Committee, and the final choice is made to represent the entire district. I'd like to um, identify those who helped us on the committee this year. Uh, Principal Jennifer Wiebe, are you here? Thank you, Jennifer. We're right there in the back. Um, our Director of Communications, Lika Juarez, is right down here. She helped us out. Elsa Hernandez, are you here tonight? We had to rip the, the crown out of her hands. She was last year's recipient for the, for the honor. Uh, Yvonne Murillo, our CSEA president, right down here. And our final representative was Gina Rodriguez, who was the secretary in the Ed Services Department. So thank you so much for helping. And I think they would all agree that it is a really rewarding process to interview these nominees and challenging because there's so many great things that are happening. Do you remember the phrase, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound? How many of you remember that? Who's the superhero? Superman, of course. We love our superheroes. In 2018, six of the top 10 domestic grossing films were about superheroes. Did any of you see any of these movies? Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Incredibles 2, Deadpool 2, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Venom. All six of those were in the top 10 movie uh, for the 2018 year. We love our superheroes because they overcome the forces of disunity, indifference, complacency, disorganization, and lack of support. Okay, I've got to make sure I have everybody's attention. What I'm about to tell you now is top secret, okay? You've got to promise to keep the secret. I also want to do a pinky promise, but Azusa Unified School District has been under the watchful eye of a group of superheroes. No, it's not the Avengers. It's the Azusans. The Azusans include a team of nine superheroes and some sidekicks that relentlessly guard us from disunity, indifference, 
complacency, disorganization, and lack of support. Their operations base is a place called Chapter 299. Try to visit it sometime. <laughs> I invited them tonight, but they are very humble and they don't like attention. So the best I can do is tell you about the Azusans. Number one is a superhero named Technostorm, sometimes referred to as Gigabyte. This superhero is a technological superforce. Technostorm is the link of information between the Azusans, a virtual genius in all things technological, both software and hardware. Our next superhero is Facilitron. Facilitron is a shape shifter. You will primarily see four shapes. Plant Man, Maintain-O-Matic, Transporto, and Clean Machine. Facilitron keeps all things working and tidy for the Azusans. Facilitron is all about operation support. The next superhero is the Reinforcer. This superhero specializes in support. This can come in a variety of ways, keeping the Azusan sharp by reviewing new information and checking for understanding, translations, printing of records and materials, processing and distribution of information, and a constant vigilance to ensure the safety of the Azusans. The support provided by the reinforcement is reinforcer is critical to the mission of the superheroes. And next we have Clericon. Clericon is the superhero that specializes in the organization for the Azusans. Clericon generates records and is often the first contact with the Azusans. Clericon serves as the information and support hub for the operations base chapter 299. Next superhero, the Nutritionator. Let's not forget the Nutritionator. Superheroes need the best fuel to maintain their mission. The Nutritionator demands nothing but the highest meal standards for the team, and as a bonus, the meals are tasty. The Bridge, our next superhero. The Bridge reaches out to others to answer questions about the Azusans and works to ensure they are fully informed about the activities of the Azusans. The Bridge connects the Azusans to the greater community. And Mr. Bomberito, this superhero is ready to help you. The Guardian of the Coin. Someone has to keep track of all the Azusan's resources. That someone is our superhero who is affectionately referred to as the guardian of the keep and keeper of the coin. Since superheroes are a very big business, there must be someone keeping a watchful eye on all the resources. It's amazing to watch the speed demonstrated by the guardian of the coin on either the abacus or the 10 key calculator. Next, Health Star. Of course, the well-being of the Azusans must be maintained. So the efforts of the superhero Health Star are vital. Health Star is constantly monitoring the well-being of the Azusans and making sure they are fit to do their job. And last, referentium. And the last but not least is the renowned referentium. This is a this uh, superhero is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to maintaining a storehouse of knowledge and information and pointing the Azusas to the right place to get information. Whether it be from the ancient books that are out there in a faraway place called the internet, Referencium will get the answer. So those are the nine superheroes we call the Azusans. Tonight we are going to personally meet some of those sidekicks that assist the Azusans. So, feel safe, my friends. We are under the watchful eye and care of some great superheroes. Mr. Gomez, come on up. Oh, one last thing. Um, nominees, you will be receiving a mug from your, your uh, Chapter 299 right up here. Very good. And one other thing that I'd like to ask, if you are here with the nominee that's being represented at, at the very beginning, would you please stand in support of that person? Thank you. So, Nanette, Tony, if you could can please stand. So, I'm, I'm here to uh, uh, represent uh, and to acknowledge the great work of our lead Nike custodian, uh, Aztecs, let's give it up for Mr. John Perry. 
Uh, again, uh, John is here uh, with his wife, Nanette, uh, his best friend, Tony. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with John for uh, two years. Uh, he's been uh, with the district for 29 years, uh, and for anybody that has come into contact or has ever been stuck at Azusa at night and ran into, uh, and ran into John, uh, you know that his positive can-do attitude uh, is, is why he's here. He's, uh, something that you, don't, you may not know about uh, John is that he's won uh, the award uh, twice in, in 12 years. Uh, and if he sticks around longer, he's going to win it again because that, that's just the type of person he is. Um, I see people up here that know John and they're shaking their heads because uh, they can agree that he's awesome. Uh, some other tidbits uh, that you may not have known about Mr. Perry is that his family uh, owned and operated the Italian Express for over 12 years on Foothill and Cerritos. So if you see this uh, handsome mug and it looks familiar, it's because he probably served you some Italian food. Um, uh, and, and also, uh, uh, although he, he, uh, he attended school uh, in Arroyo, uh, he has roots in Azusa. Uh, and uh, so, to me, uh, he's an adopted Aztec. Uh, we know community. Uh, once an Aztec. Always an Aztec. And, and I know that, that uh, when, it, when it comes down to it, uh, uh, John is an Aztec. He, he puts everything into uh, his work at night. Uh, he's... Uh, ex for me, it's an esteemed pleasure to, to work with him. Uh, he's dedicated, he's trustworthy, he's hardworking. Uh, I make sure that uh, I give him some tangerines every night because uh, he does a lot of work uh, above and beyond uh, what is asked of him. Um, and effective, efficient work, he, he is, his, uh, his, his glow uh, shines enough uh, that, that, that the people that he works with uh, try to keep up with him, which is difficult to do. Uh, but he's just such, he's, he's an awesome person. I'm, I'm glad I'm here uh, uh, to shake his hand like I do every night. But this time, it's extra special because you are Azusa High School's uh, Classified Staff Member of the Year. Congratulations, John. <laughs> so, man. And, and uh, talking about superheroes, he already said his favorite superhero is Batman because he looks like him and he can fight like him too. So <laughs> don't mess with him at night. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm really um, honored to give the first classified employee award. Um, I, I am retired 40 years of service as a classified employee and a union job steward from CSEA. Um, but enough about me. I'm here to give this award. <laughs> I'm this, here to uh, give this award. Azusa Unified School District Classified Employee of the Year is proudly to present John Perry for his contribution and dedication to the students of Azusa. January 15, 2019, signed by Dr. Linda Kaminsky, Superintendent, and our Board President, Chilonin Cruz Gonzalez. Turn it around. It is my pleasure and privilege to introduce Dalton's 2019 Classified Employee of the Year, Chris Chavez. <laughs> History of supporting students in Azusa. She was originally hired in his ASD 45 years ago, but she left for 18 years to work as a checker. When she returned, she started at Dalton as an instructional aide in the special education program. That is where she has remained ever since, providing support to students who struggle and making a difference that changed lives forever. I can speak to this with confidence because Chris and I worked together in the RSP program at Dalton from 1997 to 2002. Something I never forgot was her passion and care for the students. Chris takes her job very seriously and doesn't let issues fall through the cracks. I experienced firsthand how she stays on top of student needs, communicates often with staff, and spends dedicated time individualizing her work to ensure that each child is successful. The current education specialist in the RSP program, Renee French Burton, appreciates how knowledgeable Chris is about special education and how to work with students with various needs. Chris is dependable and flexible. She's able to roll with the uncertainty of any given day and ready to do whatever needs to be done. Renee also shared that Chris genuinely cares about children and the students know this. Chris makes them feel welcome and safe. Renee appreciates how Chris keeps the program running like a well-oiled machine. 
As the principal responsible for the program, I have to agree with Renee. But I also appreciate how Chris always steps in when there's a need on campus, beyond the scope of her program. Chris always volunteers to pitch in when she sees a need, taking the initiative to support the school when she is able. Chris wants all students to have a great experience every day at Dalton. Chris contributes to the greater Azusa community through her 40 years of work in the Religious Release Program and through her church. She's a proud mother, wife, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Chris cares about people, and Azusa is lucky to have her. Congratulations, Chris. Hill Middle School is honored to present Gabriel Zamora as this year's Classified Employee of the Year. As I began preparing the speech, I didn't know where to start and that Gabriel has done so much for FMS as a special education instructional aid. In particular, servicing our life skills students. First off, when it comes to being trained for a particular type of student medical procedure, such as a G-tube feeding, which he currently is doing for a student right now, Gabriel will not hesitate to say yes when asked. Gabriel, we need you to be trained on administering a catheter. Sure. <laughs> Gabe, we need you to be trained on, administer, uh, on mixing the right amount of prescribed medicine with the proper amount of water. No problem. <laughs> Gabe, we need you to perform surgery. Why not? <laughs> secondly, secondly, Gabriel has a knack for determining the best approach when dealing with the more difficult students. For example, last year, we had a very challenging student, no one, including me, could figure out an ideal way to calm the student. Well, Gabriel found a way not only to keep the student mellow, but also kept them occupied when the teacher was conducting a whole group lesson. Finally, because Gabe developed ways to deal with this more difficult student, he agreed to temporarily change his job classification of instructional aid to, uh, to student support assistant, which is also known as a one-on-one. -on -one. Ultimately, Gabriel is such a team player. Gabriel feels strongly about the success of our students as demonstrated by how he goes above and beyond for all stakeholders. Gabriel, in his spare time, this is true, he enjoys shopping. Yeah. In addition, Gabe organizes our yearly Secret Santa event and is the FMS CSEA site representative. Gabriel is joined tonight by some of our Foothill family. Foothill, stand up. Ooh, ooh. In closing, it is an honor to be associated with such a dedicated employee who anyone at FMS can count on. Please join me in recognizing a fellow Azusa Aztec. Gabriel Zamora is Foothill Middle School's Classified Employee of the Year. Good evening. Gladstone High School and its staff are proud to present Adriana Kirchfeld as our Classified Employee of the Year. <laughs> Media Center clerk who also supports the efforts of our library as well as our activities office. She is accompanied this evening by her husband, Raul Kirchfeld, also some uh, members of our staff from Gladstone High School. Earthquake, literally an earthquake that brought her and her husband together, and they can explain later. <laughs> but it's the love of their children that has kept them on the move. As parents of two proud, two proud graduates of Gladstone High School, they have seen their son Sebastian graduate from Laverne University, become a corpsman in the United States Navy. Their son Santiago will graduate from UC Riverside this spring. Therefore, tonight we celebrate not only tremendous AUSD employees, but tremendous families in our community. Adriana has been selected for this recognition by our school because she is a model of professionalism, a humble and dedicated worker who knows what it means to be in service to others. 
She works hard to support our teachers with their needs from the Media Center and takes initiative to support our educational program. She has the unique task of being supportive to other work, staffing the library when needed to serve students, and filling in as necessary in a busy office for student activities, for student purchases, questions about events and supports, as well as many other things. Between her formal role, addressing parents, responding to phones, managing and mentoring students, and still being a kind colleague, Adriana stands out as a testament to the work done by all our classified staff. In a group of very dedicated employees, you can mention nearly any one of them as deserving of recognition. But tonight, Adriana stands out for a record of service and support. We would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to her for a job well done. Please join us in thanks and appreciation for Adriana Kirchfeld, Classified Employee of the Year from Gladstone High School. Tonight, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Gladstone Street's Classified Employee of the Year, Katie Carmona. <laughs> Katie started here in our district back in 1995. She was a kindergartner in Ms. Mendoza's class at Murray School. As an EL student, she began learning English with the support from her teachers. Katie also became involved in school activities there, like fame with Mrs. Lopez, tumbling across the stage to Black Cat, and I remember it. Then in fifth grade with Mrs. Hendricks, Katie learned the value of setting high expectations and achieving goals. As a Gladstone High School gladiator, she um, began to learn the importance of making personal connections with her students like Mrs. Fury in her class, and it was Mrs. Fury who actually helped her pick out the color of her prom dress. So the impact these teachers had on her is just a reflection of the type of employee Katie is today. Three years ago, after working for Think Together in Baldwin Park, Katie was hired as the librarian at Valleydale. Then last year, she began working at our school in the computer lab. She does much more than just run our computer lab. Here are a few things she does around our campus. She's the secretary for our school site council. She does reading intervention groups. She works closely with our PTA. She puts together all our school flyers. In the afternoon, she works with third through fifth graders in an ELD intervention group. And um, she does all our school social media postings. She keeps track of the technology on our campus. She supports teachers in the classroom when the kids are using Chromebooks. I can keep going on, but I'll stop. There, and she also keeps our website page going with all the important things that our school are doing. So I can't say enough about how lucky we are to have her on our campus. She's a true team player who supports teachers, students, and me. Like the skills she learned from her teachers, Katie makes connections. She has high expectations for our students. Because of her, Gladstone Street is a great place. Thank you, Katie. I value and appreciate all that you do for the staff, for me, and more importantly, our students. So please join me in congratulating Gladstone Street's classified employee, Katie Carmona. Good evening. It is my privilege and my pleasure to introduce to you Mrs. Karina Serrano, Hodge School's Classified Employee of the Year. She's joined tonight by her family, her husband, please feel free to stand and take credit, Eric, and four of her five children are here this evening. Um, Eric couldn't join us, but Aaron, Samantha, Savannah, and Raymond are here as well. And I wanted to specifically thank them too because I'm sure they taught her many of her skills that she utilizes in the health aid office because not only is she known for being very calm and efficient and handling numerous paperwork items that include scheduling the hearing and screening assessments as well as making sure immunizations are up to uh, par. 
but she also takes care of people who are not feeling so well, gives them encouragement, has literally held someone's head together while cleaning them up and calmly calling their parent. She does it all. And she does it with the calm, the warmth, and the kindness that any of us would want to receive or hope to receive for our children. We thank her and we know also that one of the greatest compliments that can be paid to you is that our nurse Mim has said to me many times, she's amazing. She asks great questions, which we value. She listens, she really cares, and I mean, she stays calm when things are going tough. And we just want to recognize her today on behalf of the students, the parents, the community of Hodge, all the faculty and staff, any of you who are here, let's please join together and give her the honor she deserves, our employee of Classified representing Karina Serrano. Good evening, everyone. It is with great pleasure and honor that I present Mrs. Patricia Kralik as Charles H. Lee's Classified Employee of the Year. <laughs> Let me begin by sharing that Mrs. Kralik, or Miss Pat, as we all dearly call her, has been the health aide at Lee Elementary School for almost 30 years. And she is joined by her husband of 48 years. So you can see that her dedication and commitment shines in all aspects of her life. <laughs> Mrs. Pat takes great pride in taking good care of our Lee Lions. She is such a caring, supportive, positive, positive individual. Mrs. Pat is like a ray of sunshine. From the minute she walks on campus to the minute she leaves, she always has a smile on her face no matter the circumstance. Mrs. Pat's rapport with students is amazing. She has a very special nurturing and endearing way about her that shines through each and every time that a child walks into her office. Another special quality that Mrs. Pat displays is her youthfulness. Every year on Halloween, we eagerly await the big reveal of her costume, as she has surprised us all with her gigantic gorilla or dinosaur costume, which you can check out on our Lee Facebook page. <laughs> Along with being an excellent health aide, Ms. Kralik has served as a member of Lee's PTA and has volunteered her time to assist with fundraising events. Mrs. Patricia Kralik is truly an asset to Charles H. Lee Elementary School. Therefore, we are truly blessed and honored to recognize her as Charles H. Lee's Classified Employee of the Year. Thank you, Ms. Kralik, for all that you do. Good evening. Tonight it is my great honor and privilege to introduce Paula Huerta as Longfellow's Classified Employee of the Year. Mother used to say that angels walk among us, and when I was young I would look for these angels expecting to see someone dressed in a flowing white gown with magnificent majestic wings and a golden halo above her their head. The irony of it all is that when I was young I never saw such an angel. However, throughout my adult life I have been fortunate to have known several angels that walk among us, and Paula is definitely one such person. Anyone who knows Paula would describe her as quite humble and kind. To say that Paula gives more than she receives is an understatement. Paula has generously given her time by volunteering countless hours to support our families in school. She actively participates in school events and it has unquestionably become the go-to person when we are in need of a volunteer. Teachers, students, and parents alike seek her friendly and welcoming presence. Without hesitation or reservation, Paula is always willing to pitch in for the good of the school and the students. Therefore, she has become one of our most well-known, highly valued, and respected staff members. 
Paula demonstrates an extraordinary commitment to work with our littlest ones, who often have the greatest of needs. Her attentive and nurturing qualities are self-evident. She is an encourager by nature and is quick to offer a comforting smile or a helping hand. She has a caregiver's heart. In her role as a paraprofessional in Life Skills Preschool Classroom, Paula's gentle, friendly, and compassionate disposition enables her to quickly build a positive rapport and earn the trust of the children. It is evident in everything Paula does that she genuinely cares for the students. She deserves recognition for not only her work, but her time, love, and dedication to our children, their families, and the school. It takes a big heart to shape little minds. Please join me in congratulating Longfellow's resident angel and classified employee of the year, Paula Huerta. Good evening, everyone. It is my great honor to present to you Magnolia Schools Classified Employee of the Year, Linda D'Elia. She's <laughs> joined tonight by a friend and Magnolia teacher, Kay Simpson, and her son, Anthony, and grandson, Dominic. Linda has been a bona fide wild Mustang for over 30 years. Her own two sons attended Magnolia School, so she joined the PTA, served on school site council, and attended superintendent's roundtable meetings. She loved Magnolia so much, she decided to make it her second home. So she joined the team as an instructional aide, working with students who have the greatest needs, and as a noon duty supervisor. supervisor. She says her job brings her joy as she witnesses the learning that occurs for her students daily, and she couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Linda considers the Magnolia team as family, and we feel the same about her. I have had the privilege of working with Mrs. D'Elia for 19 of her 30 years, and let me tell you, she is cherished by all. Linda is just one of those people that you feel lucky to know. So if you're feeling down in your luck, you need to come meet this lady right here, okay? Staff describes Linda as loyal, kind, caring, dependable, and she goes above and beyond. She arrives for her shift each morning well before her start time just to support the office staff. And every year you will find her and her husband, John, welcoming the community at our annual Harvest Carnival as they sell tickets. Students say they love working with Mrs. D'Elia because she helps them with their reading and writing and she never gives up. Her wisdom, quiet leadership, and knack for developing solutions serve as an inspiration for us all. And when she feeds us, we're over the moon. She has a wild heart for the Magnolia community and deserves this wonderful recognition. Congratulations, Mrs. D'Elia. We are proud to name you as Magnolia's Classified Employee of the Year, and our hearts are wild for you, too. Good evening, everyone. I have the honor this evening of presenting Magnolia Adult Transition Program's Classified Employee of the Year, Rosa Kondo. <laughs> I, by her daughters, Christina and Brittany, her husband, Paul, her sister, Monica, her son-in-law, Raul, and her nieces, Elizabeth and Bella. Right there. This is the second time Rosa has been honored as the Classified Employee of the Year for our site. This is not by mistake, and let me tell you all the reasons why. When asking other team members about Rosa, there is a unanimous consensus that Rosa is non-stop. Sitting is one of Rosa's least favorite things to do. She is a problem solver and is always looking for a project. During her break, she doesn't sit and eat. She takes a walk around the block. She's got to get those steps in. <laughs> Rosa has a green thumb and really enjoys gardening. She has taught our students just about everything they need to know about composting. Our garden at MATP is beautiful every spring as it reaps the benefits. 
Rosa is very handy. She remodels her home, and when there aren't any more projects there, she remodels for friends and family. She has refurbished desks and other furniture that we've been able to use around our campus. She's, very, she's incredibly crafty. I have some of the best decorations for holidays that she's made by hand, <laughs> with love. Rose is also thrifty. She can spot a good deal a mile away, and she works with our students to teach them the, the value of a hard-earned dollar. <laughs> the thing that strikes me as most amazing about Rosa is her dedication to our transition program and the students that we serve. She truly and genuinely cares for those around her. She has many years of experience serving transition aid students with moderate to severe disabilities. She advocates for our students, ensuring their access to what they need to grow and their ability to access our community. As a job coach, she accompanies students to work to teach them the skills they need to gain employment and keep employment. She's not just on time, she's always early. She greets every team member and student daily with a smile and a warm hello. She's collaborative and just so hardworking. Rosa, thank you for all you do. We at Magnolia Adult Transition are lucky to have you as a member of our team. Congratulations to Rosa Kondo, Magnolia Adult Transition Classified Employee of the Year. Good evening. I'm proud to present to you Mountain Views Classifier of the Year, Ms. Tommy Ortiz. Yeah, Tommy! Yeah! Joining us this evening are some of our fellow Wildcats back there. There's a little one with those funny eyes who's trying to make me laugh. Okay. I'm not going to look that way. Ms. Ortiz is one of our awesome ins instructional aides. Ms. Ortiz is an integral part of the team that serves one of our life skill classrooms. In the classroom, she brings calm and stability to a dynamic setting. Her students adore her. You can tell when you can see them interacting with her. Although her ability to work with students who have special needs is commendable, what has also captured the attention of the staff is her commitment to the well-being of the entire school community. She not only steps in when she sees the needs, she steps it up, and she also raises the bar for everyone. When you know, if you know Ms. Ortiz, you know she's kind, she's generous, and this is shown through the actions that she does every day. The time and support that she gives to the student and staff at Mountain View is imme are imme immeasurable. Ms. Ortiz volunteers her times and artistic talents by supporting our after-school programs and events. Along with other teachers, she leads their students in the environmental club and working on the gardening components of the school. The students, under her care, under her directions, strives and they learn to, as they learn to grow their gardens, they learn also on how to take care of our fragile earth. Ms. Ortiz is purposeful in her work she, she strives to make a positive influence on the students and believes that working in a school is the best way to build rapport with students and having a lasting impact on the future and our community is what she's, is her goal. She is one of our positive behavior intervention and support volunteers who mentors our students. She provides supports and to the students who need us most. Uh, one of her mentees stated, Ms. Tommy is super kind. She always asked if I'm okay and was there when I needed her. She helped me improve in class and at home. Thank you, Ms. Ortiz. You definitely have made an impact on this student's life. You made a positive influence as you had set out to do. Congratulations. We are honored to have you representing the Mountain View Wildcats for the second year in a row. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. It is my honor to speak on behalf of Murray Elementary's Classified Employee of the Year, Mrs. Martha Salas. Here supporting Ms. Salas is her husband, Ramon Salas, uh, her son, Marvin, her daughter, Lizette, and her little grandson, Mason. Hi, Mason. <laughs> Mrs. Salas first came to the U.S. from Zacatecas, Mexico in 1973. She married her husband, Ramon Salas, of 40 years in 1978. Together, they had three kids, Susie, who works as an MRI technician, Marvin, a manager at Toyota, and Lizette, a professional golfer. All three of Martha's children received their education here in Azusa. They attended Gladstone Street Elementary, Center Middle School, and finally graduated from Azusa High School. Mrs. Salas has also been blessed with six grandchildren, ranging in age from 19 to two years old. Martha first began in Azusa as a student in the adult school in 1996, and she graduated in 1997. Her first position in Azusa Unified was as a child care provider at the adult school in which she worked until 2012. In 2012, she was transferred to Murray Elementary, where she has been as a bilingual instructional aide ever since. Martha is very passionate about her job. She has shared with me that she is here for the children. She works hard to help them and to especially help those that are struggling. She always has a smile, a hug, or an it will be okay for our students. Martha feels that sometimes all they need is a little bit of reassurance and she is happy to give them that. Martha wants to see our students succeed. She organizes her lessons at home. She works at home. She comes to school prepared. She's excited to come to work. And she does it all for our students. And she wants to make sure that they're, that they're always getting the best possible support. She supports uh, our parent meetings and believes that parents can better help their students by being prepared themselves, which is why she went out and, and seek to prepare herself to be able to, to help her students. So on behalf of the Murray staff and myself, I would like to, take, to thank you, Martha, for your passion and for your dedication to our students and to our school. And, like she told me, for treating the children as if they were your own. Thank you so much, Martha. All right, I'll get on this side. <laughs> I'm easy. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. It is with great pleasure I introduce to you Paramount Elementary's Classified Employee of the Year, Mrs. Edna Pacheco. Tonight, Mrs. Pacheco is joined by her husband of 23 years, Anthony Pacheco, her sons Anthony, Mark, Michael, Isaac, and Joseph, family, friends, fellow Paramount staff. Thank you for being here tonight. Edna is a product of Azusa Unified School District. She attended Lee Elementary, Foothill Middle School, and Azusa High School. All of her boys either attended or are currently attending Azusa schools. As a matter of fact, Joseph is a fifth grade student at Paramount. Mrs. Pacheco has worked for the Azusa Unified School District for four years. She began working as a new aid supervisor at Paramount and volunteered at the school for two hours. Mr. Allard, the principal at the time, recognized her hard work and dedication to Paramount and hired Edna as an RSP aide. Edna enjoyed working and helping students, and again, her desire and dedication to support our school was evident when Edna volunteered to help when our health aide left. Ultimately, Edna was hired as our health aide and has done a great job. She is dedicated to helping students when they're feeling ill, comforting them when they need time to rest, providing a healthy snack if they come to school on an empty stomach, or listen if they need someone to talk to. Edna does an outstanding job communicating with parents and teachers 
and is always willing to lend a helping hand when things get busy in the office. So thank you, Edna, for everything you do, and it is a great pleasure once again to introduce you as Classified of the Year employee for Paramount Elementary. Now, <laughs> we'll get her done. All right. <laughs> Good evening. Powell School is thrilled to present Ms. Dorothy Castrita as this year's Classified Employee of the Year. <laughs> she is joined tonight by her two sisters, Yolanda and Rose. Back there in the back, wave Yolanda and Rose. Um, her son, Michael, her daughter, Bernadette, her son-in-law, Octavio, and her two beautiful grandchildren, Christian and Tatiana. Wave to us, family in the back. Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, Dorothy first joined Powell um, in 1990 as a health aide and then became Powell's clerk in 1994. Thus, she has been serving the parents, children, and staff at Powell for the past 29 years. After working all morning in the office, Dorothy then switches roles and is a lead teacher in our after school program. This she has done for 20 years. So, as you can see, she wears many hats at Powell. So let me just highlight a few of them tonight. Hat number one, office sensation. In addition to all of her clerical duties, Dorothy understands the difference a positive tone or a patient response can make. She demonstrates this daily as she interacts with people that walk through our office door or call on the phone. Our parents respect her deeply, as some of them were once Powell Panthers themselves, remembering her from their time as a student. Sorry, lost my place. Um, as a tender-hearted mom and grandma, Dorothy treats all of our students as if they were her own. Kids come up to the office with various ills and excuses, but many, time, many times all they're really looking for is a little love from Miss Dorothy. She offers a kind word, gives a hug, fixes a hair bow, and suddenly all is right with the world. Hat number two, creative genius. Dorothy has an innate creative talent and vision that is continually relied upon at Powell. No matter what the season, she decorates the office in a way that makes people feel inspired and at home when they walk in. Her design of intricate props, creative costumes, and beautiful backdrops for our musicals and shows make our kids feel like they're in a Broadway production. When I host a barbecue for the staff, Dorothy always... <laughs> See, she's helping me even now. <laughs> Dorothy always makes me look good by developing a theme, bringing cute tablecloths and centerpieces. You get the idea. She brings the beauty to our community. Hat number three, tremendous teacher. These are some of the things her students said about her from her after school class. She wants us to have a good education. She wants us to learn and have fun at the same time. She makes time for us. She makes me inspired. She's caring, fun, and funny. She's like a mom to me. We feel loved. Well, Miss Dorothy, our office sensation, our creative genius, our tremendous teacher, through all that you do, you make us all feel loved. We at Powell are so thankful that you are with us, and it is our honor to be associated with such a dedicated and lovely person. Please join the Powell staff recognizing our Classified Employee of the Year, Dorothy Castrida. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Sierra High School's Classified Employee of the Year, Ms. Darlene Mata.
tonight by her mother Diana, father Michael, her nephew Stephen, and her sister Mia. Darlene, one of seven children, attended Center Gladstone High School and then made the very wise decision to move to Sierra. As a graduate of Sierra, and an aide for SOAR Academy, she has a unique connection with our students. She is quick to smile and even quicker to extend a helping hand to our students and, a, and as a result has made a significant and positive impact on the lives of all of our students. Her laid back style, approachability, and great sense of humor generate a natural trust for our students. In fact, many have said she is the most favorite adult ever. <laughs> she takes the time to get to know the students and takes time to mentor them. She has partnered with Miss Espinosa and the Parks and Recreation delivering meals to families in need, purchase clothes and shoes for kids who are struggling, and never draws attention to any of her actions or generous deeds. Darlene's key eye and connection with students give her the ability to notice and acknowledge the most, the smallest of victories that they achieve each day and over the course of the school year. In addition, she has collaborated with staff to help create unique PBS awards and recognition opportunities. Sierra and SOAR are very lucky to have Darlene. Instructional aid, alumni, mentor, an avid USC fan. <laughs> Please join me in recognizing Ms. Darlene Mata as Sierra's Classified Employee of the Year. It's okay. Good evening. I'm Yvette Walker, the principal at Slauson Middle School, and I am proud to present Ms. Melissa Romanek as this year's Slauson Classified Employee of the Year. <laughs> Melissa is joined this evening by her mother, her aunt, her sister, her three nieces, and our Slauson staff. Please stand. Thank you. Melissa joined Azusa Unified back in 1994, in which time she has served as an instructional aide, an adult education teacher, a substitute teacher, a computer lab aide, and is currently working as our ASB clerk at Slauson Middle School. Melissa arrives to work every day with a cheerful, anything is possible with kindness attitude. When sending out notes, calendars, or reminders to staff, she is always sure to include a note of kindness. In addition to having served in several positions with our district, Melissa also served on the Classified Advisory Committee and has been appointed to the CSEA State Level Standing Committee. More often than not, you can also find her here at board meetings, which she attends regularly to keep herself informed. Furthermore, Melissa takes quite an active part in the Azusa community. Year after year, she is highly involved in the Golden Days Parade, the Taste of the Town, the Field of Glory, and the Veterans Day Ceremony. She is also a big supporter of the Azusa Police Department and attends their events regularly. For the past seven years, she has been a troop leader with the Girl Scouts, taking girls on many adventures, both in and out of the state. Melissa has a generous and kind spirit. She is friendly, caring, and has a great sense of humor. She takes great pride in her work and is very organized in all that she does. Melissa understands the demands of balancing the ASB budget to the penny while organizing fundraisers, dances, and field trips. It is a true blessing to have Melissa as part of our Slauson staff. Please join me in recognizing and congratulating Melissa Romanek as Slauson's Classified Employee of the Year.
Good evening. It is my honor to present Jasmine Jimenez as Valadez <laughs> Classified Employee of the Year. <laughs> she has a fan club. <laughs> Joining us to celebrate is her mom, Maria, her sisters, Marcia, Gina, uh, and Marcia and Gina. Also her nieces and some of our Valley Dale family. Thank you for joining us. We have been blessed to have Jasmine at Valley Dale for the past five years where she began with us as a noon supervisor and she capitalized on every opportunity to make a positive impact and also to form supportive relations. While on the playground, you would often find Ms. Jasmine surrounded by a group of students and she would counsel them, she would connect with them, interview them, investigate, but most importantly, she helped them find a peaceful resolution to any situation that they were dealing with in the most supportive way. Every student at Valley Dell knows her and every student at Valley Dell loves her. Last year, we were lucky enough to have Jasmine become one of our instructional aides, and her supportive role continued at Valley Dell. At any time, if you need volunteers for back to school night, Jasmine is there. If you need playground supervision support, you can count on Jasmine. If you need help with Saturday Academy, Jasmine is there. It is that dedication and willingness to help that sets her apart. And if it weren't enough, she continues to volunteer to serve our community during her free time. She has spent numerous years volunteering with the Azusa Little League at Dalton Park as a cheer coach and supporting summer camp. And it is this giving of herself that we truly appreciate. We thank Jasmine for her positive influence, her commitment, and it is a great honor to be associated with such a dedicated classified employee. Please join me in congratulating Jasmine Jimenez as Valley Dell's Classified Employee of the Year. Before we start, I have a pair of glasses that was left outside. If it belongs to you, please see Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I proudly represent the number one restaurant in Azusa, known as known as the Azusa Unified Nutrition Services Department. Congratulations to all the outstanding classified staff. It's a great honor to present the Nutrition Services Department Employee of the Year, Mrs. Luz Flores. <laughs> Luz is here with her husband, daughter, son, and son's girlfriend and several colleagues who have been her strongest support system over the years. Luz began her career as a food service worker here in Azusa Unified School District 19 years ago. As you all know, making over 600 meals a day for 19 years is an onomous task, especially if you have to wake up at 4 a.m. daily to ensure you're at work by 6 a.m. If you're late by a few minutes, you impact over 600 high school students. Luz takes her job responsibilities seriously. In 19 years, she has not been let to work a single day. On a regular day, Luz cooks and assembles an average of 100 chicken sandwiches, 70 hamburgers, 30 soups, 150 special entree meals, 50 Asian combo meals, 50 Tex-Mex combo meals, and also bakes at least 140 cookies. All these items have to be ready by 10.45 a.m. and no later, because when the students who are our customers show up, 
Every minute counts and we have to be ready. As a food service worker three, Luz will be called upon to train new team members while still performing her regular duties. Now, that's a stellar employee. <laughs> As managers and administrators, we all have dedicated and wonderful employees, and that's why we are here today. The Nutrition Services Employee of the Year is difficult to nominate because we have over 100 great and deserving employees. This is therefore very telling about what kind of employee Mrs. Flores is. She truly cares about the students. She's willing to learn and try new recipes in an effort to increase participation. All the new hires she trains rave about how patient and detailed she is. I asked Mrs. Flores if there's anything she wanted me to mention today. With a charcoal, she responded, I just want you to say you love me. <laughs> Isn't that what you said today? <laughs> <laughs> now, because of the legalities of a workplace as a director, I, <laughs> I stay away from the phrase, I love you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> However, when I'm... <laughs> When the employee of the year makes a request, it has to be honored. Luz, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> and what you do for the students of Azusa Unified School District. Thank you. And although these two words don't suffice, we sincerely appreciate all your hard work and dedication over the years. Lunch ladies rock, and they are the unsung heroes who nourish our children daily. Please join me in congratulating Miss Luz Flores as Nutrition Services Classified. my pleasure to introduce Rose Loevenos, selected as the District Office Classified Employee of the Year. <laughs> as our secretary in the Curriculum Instruction and Assessment Office, also known as the CIA. <laughs> Tonight, she is joined by her family, her husband Greg of 37 years. <laughs> daughter Nicole, and grandchildren Noah, Isabella, and Michaela. When I asked Rose what she enjoys best about her work in AUSD, she replied, I enjoy helping other people get the information they need. I love helping students and learning more about education so I can pass that on to my grandchildren. She also says that AUSD is her second family. Rose has been a part of the AOSD family since kindergarten. She attended Dalton, the same school that her grandchildren attend, Sasa and Azusa High, and also Citrus College. Rose is in her 24th year working for the district and has worked as school secretary at both Longfellow and Dalton prior to coming to the district office. And while at Longfellow and Dalton, she was selected as their classified employee of the year. In 2005, Rose received the Teachers Honoring Excellence Award from the Azusa Educators Association. In 2014, she was awarded the CUBE for Outstanding AUSD Employee. Which brings us to 2019. Rose, you've received many awards and recognitions because you exemplify service. But don't take it from me. Let me tell you what your colleagues said about you. <clears throat> you work well with everyone. Rose is amazingly helpful. 
She goes out of her way to help everyone. She is very knowledgeable. Anytime anyone has a question, they can go to you for help. I admire her work ethic and the way she helps everyone. Rose is a great friend, listener, and very easy to get along with. Any office that works with her is privileged because she's so hardworking. She's fun to work with. She makes the work environment a fun place to be in. Rose is a wonderful person inside and out, both personally and professionally. She is loving, caring, and wants the best for everyone. Rose is one of a kind, a jewel, and a treasure. And I couldn't agree more. So thank you, Rose, for your commitment to AUSD. Congratulations on being named the Classified Employee of the Year for the District Office. Congratulations, Before we bring um, our last honoree, I wanted to take this time real quick to to share with all of you. I am I'm recently I've recently been um, elected to be on this this board, and being a CSEA employee, being on the other side for 19 years, um, and now being on this side, I, I'm I'm deeply humbled to hear all the stories and to see how hard CSEA is there for their employees, the union. So I want to thank you. I want to thank all the employees. And it, it's an honor to be here. And I, you know, I thought it was going to take a long time, but it actually went by really quick. So we have our last but not least district employee. Motion. when you have an employee I'm such as Shane. And <laughs> Don't start the timer. Uh, good evening, Board of Education and all members of the Azusa Unified School District family. It is with extreme pleasure that I get to introduce Mr. Shane Castellanos, Center Middle School and Azusa Unified School District Classified Employee of the Year. And all the representatives tonight, Shane is a star and brings the best to the students and staff he inter interacts with daily. As an alumni of Gladstone Street Elementary, Center Middle School, and Gladstone High School, Shane is a proud product of Azusa Schools. Shane found himself working for AUSD first as a lunch supervisor and then as an instructional aide. It was here in AUSD working with students that Shane found a calling. He re-registered at Citrus College and maintained not only passing grades, but graduated with honors. Shane credits this accomplishment to focus and purpose of what he wanted as a career. He is currently attending Cal Poly Pomona, pursuing a degree in psychology where he hopes to continue his work with youth who have challenges in life. Shane's daily interactions with staff and students exemplifies an outstanding employee. In addition to Shane's regular assignment in the classroom, he also tutors, supervises, and coaches all boys' sports at center. But it doesn't stop there. What is truly exceptional is his altruistic frame of mind. He looks to be a good employee at center, but more importantly, he looks to be a participating member of the community. I could go on, but let's look at Shane's project imp impact this past holiday season. sound no I'm not singing it and we could put Shane on the spot that would just add to his uh this one's 
Ça va. Ça So Shane found a need in the community for families in need during the holiday season. So he spearheaded a group and raised over $3,000 to feed families in Azusa. Gathering friends and resources, they went out, shopped, found the families and the resources to deliver those meals. And uh, this is chronicling their, uh, their journey through that day and delivering those meals, shopping, preparing. Everybody got fed. <laughs> this project was self-driven. He saw a need, identified families, and then went to work fundraising and mobilizing resources. It hasn't stopped there. It was just one project. He recently coordinated a three-on-three basketball tournament where the proceeds are to be used to create a fund for student enrichment called Empowering Student Dreams. And he just doesn't stop. It's currently basketball season right now. Most coaches are just preparing their students for games and trying to get their players ready. But Shane is doing that, but he wanted to do that, but he wants to do more. He wants to show his students how to be good citizens. His team has partnered up with Gladstone Elementary School to go on Wednesdays to read with students before their practice. This is just one more example of Shane's dedication to the holistic well-being of students and the community. Today, Shane is joined by his family. The family can stand up. Before the media, family. Here you go ahead, don't. We have a fruitful home project, representatives of the Cougar sports teams, and center staff. You guys can all stand up and Corey and Shane. Bob Marley stated, the greatness of a man is not in how much wealth he acquires, but in his integrity and his ability to affect those around him positively. Shane Castellanos is a great man. Please join me in congratulating the 2018-2019 Center School and Azusa Unified School District Classified Employee of the Year, Mr. Shane Casalanos. Yes. Um, so as a Unified School District, would like to congratulate you, and we have these two things for you. We have the award everyone else has received, so here you go. Um, but we also have this plaque that says, Azusa Unified School District congratulates Shane Castellanos, Classified Employee of the Year 2018-2019. Before I pass this over to you, um, to, so you can give us a little speech, um, I just want to say, really, we really appreciate everything that you've given to this community. Um, the fact that you've grown up here, this is your community, and um, and that you stay here and you're dedicated to it um, is very impressive. And and uh, we are the beneficiaries. We, as the school district, as the students, I see your your students back there, or your, your team, all right, basketball team, all right, uh, future Laker players, maybe, <laughs> all right, um, um, but. Uh, all of this is a testament to your dedication to our community, so I, I just can't express our appreciation to you. Um, and I look forward to seeing where you go. Here. Let's <laughs> take a picture before you. Hello, excuse me. Can I say something about Shane? I know Shane since he was in high school. He was not that tall. But I, I you know, I love this young man because he is very passionate you know my grandkids you know he played um they played baseball with him and basketball with him and he's always out in the courts rain or shine and he's very well deserved i'm very proud of you shane thank you Thank you. Thank you guys, everybody here. Um, uh, so today, I was getting my hair cut from P-Cuts, uh, 
I, when I told my barber on Dresseribi that I had to write a speech to give today, uh, it somehow came up in the conversation how much our childhood affects who we become as adults. And it got me thinking about my own experience and how it shaped me. And as I was getting ready to write this, I thought about my eighth grade basketball team, who I did not know was going to be here tonight. Thank you guys. I love you guys. Um, I thought about my eighth grade basketball team and um, how the rain has kept us off the court all week. Um, so we weren't able to practice this week, and we have a game tomorrow. That was what was on my mind when I was ready to write this speech. I was thinking about my kids. And um, so I decided to give a speech in the form of a letter to my 11-year-old self. Um, <coughs> where I will remember the lessons that I've learned throughout my life and hopefully um, teach my team uh, that sometimes in life, you guys, uh, really listen to me. Um, really, they don't always listen. <laughs> in life, you're going to be presented with opportunities that teach you lessons, and it's your job to learn from them because a lot of times the things are presented to us and they just go over our heads. Um, so pay attention to the people in your life. Um, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start this. So this is a letter to my 11-year-old self. Uh, hi, Shane. Yes. Uh, tomorrow you have a football game with the Azusa Raiders, and you will hear your nephew, Matthew, start to cry at 1 a.m., wake everybody up. Yes, very loud. Um, and you will get up and take him from your sister, Melissa, and rock him to sleep so that he can get some rest. This was uh, the right decision. Because that sleep you sacrificed allowed your sister to rest. She'll pay you back. Ooh, it's going to get real. <laughs> your sister will encourage you to volunteer with the City of Azusa Parks and Recreation, coaching youth sports, which will be the foundation of what you will one day turn into a career. Lesson I learned from you. <sighs> you will want to play quarterback in this game, but later you will learn that you were put here on this earth to protect, so you will play left tackle. Protecting quarterbacks blindside, a metaphor that will take you years to realize that speaks directly to your purpose in life. Along the way, you will have two wonderful parents. My parents are here today. Your mom will wait until your siblings are old enough before she goes back to school to get her teaching credential. This will teach you that it is never too late to pick up where you left off, a lesson that you will need to adopt when you drop out of school in 2010. Your pops will tell you stories about before you were born, uh, when he delivered pizza so that he can have enough money to pay for your big brother Paul's diapers. He will start as a janitor at a company and move up into a position that requires a master's degree to get, but he will find a way to be so good at his craft that his company can't let him go. This will teach you that no roadblock comes without a detour. Someday, 11-year-old Shane, you will move in uh, with your roommates, Cisco and Kevin, they're here tonight, who both aspire to be business owners and one day will be. The way they set goals for themselves will teach you to chase your dreams, even if they seem too big. You will also learn that it is, there is no one way to, uh, to one way, ah, sorry, let me start over. You will also learn that there is no one way to success. There are many. Cisco is going to love this. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. <laughs> Six years after you drop out of college, you will late meet a lady named Saida Valdez. Saida is here tonight. Thank you for being here. We will encourage you to go back to school, even though you have a very deep fear that it will take too long to finish because you will be older than most students around you in class. To this, she will tell you that whether you do or don't, the time will pass anyways. This will give you the courage to go back to Citrus College with a 0.79 GPA and graduate with honors, which will earn you a spot at Cal Poly Pomona. Thank you, Saida. I know that because I didn't give up on school. I will, from this perspective, show my students to never give up on themselves when things become difficult. <sighs> the year you win this award, you will be supported by your administrators, Adrian Acosta and Dr. Anthony Contreras. Adrian will remind you why you started working at Center Middle School in the first place by putting students first. You will remember, uh, you will remember that you fell in love with this job in the first place because of the impact you have over young people's lives. 
Thank you, Adrian. Anthony will show you unwavering support and offer up suggestions on how I can actually take my career plans from paper and bring them into reality. Thank you, Anthony. On the night you receive this award, you should also thank, say thank you to the classified employees from each site who make this district a great, great place to work and tell them how proud you are for the opportunity to represent what we all do on an everyday basis, which is to encourage our students to be the very best version of themselves that they could possibly be. I also want to say thank you to Rob Velasco, who gave me my first job as a noon aide in this district in 2013. Thanks for choosing me, Rob. Uh, and thank you to the best friends uh, that a guy could ask for. Uh, Chris, James, Vic, Juice, Albert, um, Aaron, Jennifer, Andres. I love you guys very much. My brothers, Michael and Paul, and everyone that holds a position with the Azusa Unified School District, I'm so proud to be a part of this community. I want to leave everyone who has a position with this district at any level with these words. Be the person you needed when you were younger. We can really change somebody's life. Thank you. Before, before you and I wrap it up, I just wanted to let, um, I, I know Yolanda and Gabby had a brief chance to speak, so if, if Jerry or Adrian wanted to say anything, just briefly. No? I know, that's, that's how I feel too. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, words can't even exp express anything better than what was just said by Shane. So Linda, did you want to wrap things up tonight? I am so proud to work here. I'm so thankful. Thank you all for what you're doing for our students, our families, and each other. God bless. Have a great night. This meeting is now adjourned at 8.35. <laughs>